Hi, welcome to our presentation. Uh, we want to introduce today Yauk to you um, to fearless automate the installation and deployment of an OpenStack cluster. Um, though, uh, first we want to show you a bit um, what Yauk actually is and why we think we needed to build it and how it works. And uh, after that, we show we, you an example about that. Um, but first, we want to introduce ourselves. So, hi, I'm Robert. I work for Stackit, which is part of the Schwarz Group. Maybe you know the Schwarz Group when you are from Europe or the US as the retail companies Lidl or Kaufland. So we're part of that whole group. We, there are some many other companies in that group. But basically, we are the cloud provider for internal and external customers, like also for the Schwarz Group and also other ones. And currently, we run multiple OpenStack clusters with more than 700 um, hypervisors and about 40,000 physical CPU cores and 12,000 VMs. And I'm Stefan Hoffmann from Cloud and Heat Technologies. Um, our vision is to build a sustainable and sovereign cloud stack um, that is not only operated by Cloud and Heat itself, but we will also enable others uh, to use that. And the sustainable part we want to achieve with um, hot water cooling. So we have a software and a hardware stack. You can be there, um, uh, we use the water, for example, with uh, integration into buildings. Um, this needs to be monitored and operated, but also the software stack above. Um, we use Yauk to roll that out. And yeah, of course, one open stack. Um, if customers are interested, also Kubernetes on top of that. But enough with the marketing stuff. Uh, let's go to Yauk, what it actually is. Um, so it's a tool to install and also operate OpenStack. We want to show it to you a bit. Um, the name is yet another OpenStack on Kubernetes. Um, and it contains of three parts. Today, we will only focus on the operator part. Um, but somehow we also need to install the bare metal nodes. So we have also automation for that. Um, on top of that, we want to run a Kubernetes, bare metal Kubernetes, and then can deploy the, the Yauk operator. But you can run the Yauk operator on any Kubernetes cluster you want. Um, though you don't need the stack below if you have some other automation for that. Um, yeah. Uh, the question is, why to use Kubernetes uh, for OpenStack? I mean, the idea is not new. We saw it uh, at the summit a lot already, but still, OpenStack is really stateful, and Kubernetes like to kill pods. So why to do that? Um, still, uh, you can define your workload pretty nice with Kubernetes. So uh, you can define, this is how my infrastructure should look like, and then there is some magic that make it happen. Um, and you can use some Kubernetes features like replicas. You can say, um, I don't want to have three Kubernetes, uh, Keystone APIs, but maybe 10. And Kubernetes make that happen for you. That's pretty nice. Also, it comes with networking, load balancing, um, liveness probes, and so on. That's pretty nice. And you can, like I said, you can easily test it because if you run it in your test environment, you have a Kubernetes cluster based on virtual machines and can pretty nice test that. But how do we actually install OpenStack? We could use Helm charts, but no. Um, we use another thing from Kubernetes, the idea to use control loops. Um, so we define something and then have a control loop that regularly checks, do we actually have the state? Um, so we define nearly everything in, Kuber uh, in Yauk with custom resources, and then the Yauk operator checks this custom resource definition um, and run this control loop. Do we have a user, for example? Do we have a configuration? And then uh, creates the deployment out of it. Um, this is an example how a plant's deployment looks like. You don't need to understand it completely, but like you see, we define database and API stuff, like the replicas but we also can define configuration. And that's one thing we wanted to achieve, that we are able to configure every option that OpenStack allows you to configure. Um, 
but also we um, define the target release uh, as we support different uh, releases. Um, and the operator then goes through some things to achieve that this is actually um, made happen. Um, that looks like then like that. Uh, I'm not going through this today. Uh, <laughs> but that's a dependency graph. So um, Yaook knows the dependencies of a resource. So for example, it knows if I want to have a config, first I need to have a database and a database user. And if I have that, then I can create the config. And I need the config to generate the API deployment. And that's pretty nice because we have then a defined order of all the things. And that's basically the core of this reconcile loop. Though um, the loop can check if something updates in the definition before and then um, updates this part that changed, actually. And also, it will fail is, uh, if, or it won't continue if one step somehow fails. For example, it won't create the API deployment if the configuration failed. But what means configuration failed? Um, if we want to define everything, every option that is possible, I mean, for glance deployment, it's quite easy. You have a glance config. But for Nova Compute Nodes, um, you maybe want to have different configuration for different nodes. And then you could have multiple configurations for the same, or multiple values for the same option uh, that are different, and that's not good. Um, at Yaook, we see that because we have a queue lang validation and then fail if we define different values for the same thing. Um, we use Oslo config to see what options are actually there and supported, and that a thing is defined as an integer if it needs to be, and not a string or something like that. And we have some uh, common defaults set in Yaook as well, like the database connection. If we generate the database before, we know already the connection string, and the user don't need to put it in. Um, right. Um, but the really fancy thing out of the things I explained before is the day two operation. Though, because we know what changed, um, we can easily update and react on that. Uh, I guess all of you somehow uh, operated already an OpenStack deployment and know how hard it is to train a gateway node. Um, if you need to remove 500 routers from an L3 agent, that's not so easy. Or let's take Nova Compute nodes. Um, you not want to live migrate all VMs from the hypervisor to update that. I mean, with 10 hypervisors, that's fine. With 500 or more, that's become time consuming. So have, you have some script for that also. Or you have Yahook. Um, because Yahook does that for you, it knows what to check. Robert will show it a bit in detail later how we erect the nodes. And this way, we can easily update the config and introduce config changes or updates of the containers. So basically, after you learned now a lot about Ayahook in theory, I will show you just a small practical example, like how, we, um, how the lifecycle management of a compute node in Yahook works. And just to make it a bit more understandable how Yahoo can benefit you. Um, basically, I will walk you through the whole process with some screenshots out of K9S. Maybe you know K9S, it's like the operating tool for Kubernetes, which is a nice UI. Um, I don't, won't make a live demo as I'm not that crazy, but uh, I made everything in a test cluster where I've already deployed um, Keystone, Lance, Neutron, and Nova um, with Yahook. And basically, the Nova deployment then in the cluster looks something like this. Uh, in this deployment, you, uh, I stripped the most, uh, the most parts out of it and only like the essential parts for this demo. For example, you don't see the section about databases, the section about the policy, the mouse config is uh, stripped out, and also like for example, policies are not there. But what you can see is one for one the target release. As the, we, as Stefan already told you, support multiple releases, um, and for some services also already the automatically upgrading of um, of the OpenStack releases. 
um, what you can also see are these two um, config sections. Like the green box would be a config that would be on all compute nodes. Uh, in the EU context, a compute node would be defined by a label in Kubernetes that would look something like EU.cloud, uh, EU cloud hypervisor true, which tells all the EU operators this is a hypervisor. And if you don't have a special node selector, this config would be rolled out to all of the nodes. Here I have just a few examples in there, like for example, default availability zone or some other configs. And in the blue box, you see a config that is selected via, with, via a node selector and only will be applied to nodes where the hypervisor type QEMU label is set on. And there I just set some extra Nova Compute config regarding the virtualization type. If I now uh, would label a node with, all, with both of these labels, I would get this resulting config that are just, just merged together and the next step would be extended by some Yahoo defaults, uh, OpenStack defaults and some like example database configs and so on and then implemented into the node. If I have a look at my cluster, currently there are five nodes but I will only have a look at the first one because this is my compute zero one and I want to deploy a compute node on this node. If you have a look at it now, it is empty. There are no pods from Yook there. And this is because we, I not yet labeled the node. In order to do that, I can just use kubectl or edit this with KNS. Um, for example, I, I will add, add these two labels, like the hypervisor true to tell Yook it's a hypervisor and also the hypervisor type QEMU to get my in, uh, additional config in there. In the next step, not the Nova operator will go to work, but the Neutron operator, because before you can install a Nova compute, you need an L2 agent. Um, this will be deployed by the Neutron operator, which also reacts on a label. And basically what you can see here is just another custom resource, this time not created by us, but by Yahoo itself. So also Yahoo creates custom resource and then the next operator also creates custom resource to define our whole environment. And basically what you can see here is first the name of the node where we want to deploy it. Then we have also some configuration for maybe the SSL encryption because all the internal communication in Yahoo is already encrypted. We have some references to other services that Yahoo can automatically configure them. For example, the keystone section in the, in the config will be just taken from the already deployed Keystone deployment. And then we have some L2 agent specific config or OVN agent, for example, the southbound configuration. And at the end, we also have, again, the target release as we support multiple stack versions. We have to pass that through to every service. If that is deployed, we will see three new pods on our node. Um, of course, if we want to deploy an OVN agent, we need our vSwitchD and also our OVSDB and an OVN controller itself. And also, in, if you see in the first pod, we have two containers in there. So there's also the metadata agent in. So we have like the whole bundle automatically deployed via Yahoo. And in the background, there were already created all the keystone users that are needed as each service, of course, has its own keystone user the config objects, and so on. So now we have a working L2 agent on the node. In the next step, after the OVN agent is already deployed, the Nova Compute agent will go to work and will read this Nova Compute node um, custom resource, which was deployed by the Nova operator. And basically, it's quite analog to the OVN agent we saw before. There you have also like the target name, the, the the release and so on in the Keystone reference, but we have also our config, which was rendered, like I showed you before, based on the two labels and added to this definition, which will, in the end, on the node, look something like this. So now we have a new pod there, the Nova Compute pod. Um, basically, in this pod, we have three containers. Um, the first one is Nova Com Compute itself, which just runs Nova Compute. And we have a libword container to have the libword functionality and also an SSH container to enable the live migration. Um, if what is quite fancy is that we, if we kill this pod, the VMs would not be affected as the libword process itself runs on the host namespace. Um, <clears throat> next step, there may be some reasons why we want to 
change from configs or recreate a node, and there we'll just show you how the lifecycle would look like. So some reasons for recreation would be like you want just to make a config change in nobody deployment, which should be rolled out to the, your whole nobody deployment, or just to one compute node, or you relabel the node. Like new label maybe shows that the node is in a new aggregate or just gets a new config, or maybe we don't want a queue email config in there for some reason. Uh, or you want to update your nodes, or what al always can happen if your hypervisor just crashes. In this case, Yahoo would also start an eviction process of the node to get all the customer workload uh, removed. And of course, you can always manually delete the compute node, which always would trigger this eviction workflow. So if now something changes, the operator detects the changes and marks this compute node for deletion, and all the VMs on there would be started to be evicted. And if they are gone, all the, the, the Nova compute node would be deleted and the OBN engine as well. And then the node is empty and would be, can be redeployed with a new Nova compute node resource and everything starts from beginning. But what is now this eviction of VMs? For that, we implemented a VIC job which would be run before the node would be deleted. And in this VIC job, I just brought in the log here. We could see in the first, uh, in the beginning, it will check if the node is actually still alive. So we just ping it, we look into Kubernetes, look into OpenStack to ensure that the node is still there and not to like start an eviction of all the VMs if the nodes, via Nova, if the nodes are still, is still alive. Because if the node is still alive, we can live migrate the VMs away. So next step, the job will just look at all the uh, VMs that are running on the node and we'll classify them based on their state. For example, active VMs normally can be live migrated. Shut off VMs have to be offline migrated. And if they are, for example, in an error state, they would be not handleable for you. And we will just wait for something, somebody to have a look at it so that we don't break it because for our error states, there can be so many reasons that we don't want to build an automation for that. And in the next step, we just run our, uh, to run the evictions and the migrations itself. This is quite nice for a single node, but the real benefit of it is, is, is comes when you have like 500 nodes or more, because then you only have a single point where you can configure your nodes and so on, uh, configure your config and the versions and everything, and Yahook will take care of the automatic rolling upgrade of the nodes. So it will take one hypervisor after another, and actually you can also configure how many hypervisors from the same label set, so maybe from the same aggregate, will be rolled out, uh, will be updated at the same time. So for a small aggregate, you can maybe one node at a time, and for a big one, you have like five or 10, just to have this all uh, in a nice and even fast manner. So this is all about this uh, compute, uh, Nova Compute example, and I will give back to Stefan. Um, maybe to give you a short overview of what is already in Yahook. So we support the uh, OpenStack versions, Queen, Train, and Yoga. Yes, Queens will be excluded uh, soonish. Um, we have already automatic OpenStack upgrades for Keystone and Glance from currently Queens to Yoga for other OpenStack servers not. Um, I remember right now, uh, Ironic is maybe also in. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> storage backends currently supported are Ceph and NetApp, and um, that's a bit tricky. Uh, with the yoga release, we switched to the OVN network uh, setup before we used Neutron agents with OVS. And um, we are also uh, GitOps ready. Yeah, so basically, as in Yahoo, everything is a custom resource. You can just place it in your repository and use tools like, for example, Flux or Argo CD, which just sync the state of your repository with your Kubernetes cluster, which, like, enables you to just make one changes in your Git repo, which we automatically rolled out to the cluster and then uh, also rolled out by Yahook to all your workload. Um, Yahook is not, or we are not done with developing it. Uh, still some things that we want to include, for example, automatic upgrades to the newest releases for all OpenStack services. Um, we want to be faster to evict hypervisors because currently if a hypervisor dies, we need to wait till Kubernetes see the node is down, and this can take five minutes or more. Uh, that's not so nice. Um, uh, we want to op op uh, optimize the OVN setup as we use it 
pretty newly and see all day um, that we could optimize something and then it's nice to put this uh, changes also into your oak. And yeah, maybe you will found some or don't found some open stack servers that you would like to use in the list then um, either you could build it by yourself or open an issue for that. Um, that could be also included. Um, and with all this Yaouk thing, we wanted, or well, it's an open source thing, and we wanted to have it really open source, though we are from two companies, but have some software owned by two companies. It's a bit tricky from, from a legal size, and also it doesn't feel though really open source. So um, we built an association, a non-profit association with other companies as well um, to uh, pro um, okay uh, yeah. uh, don't care. Um, uh, now, uh, now I got stuck um, yet um, for for building silver rain digital infrastructures um, I'm stuck at this point currently uh, but if you are more interested at four in the evening um, in room 15, uh, my colleague will introduce this uh, association a bit more. Maybe a short overview, I guess you will, would see it there also. Um, you, we have the um, educational part where it's mostly about to um, tell others why open source, open infrastructure is, is important, why sovereignty is important for them. We want to tackle the community building for projects like Yaouk and of course support not only Yaouk, but also other projects to become open source, but more than in the presentation later. Um, like I said, this whole thing is open source. You can check it out on GitLab, um, look through the documentation, or contact us on the IRC. Um, at this point, thanks for your attention. Do you have any questions? Thanks for the presentation. Um, my question is, you mentioned the name of Yahoo is yet another deployment tool. Can you elaborate on what, um, why you decided to create something new uh, compared to the existing initiatives in the community that were uh, already there before? And um, the other question is, you want to uh, expand the development beyond your own two companies? Uh, do you have any plans maybe to move um, the development to opendev.org to host uh, Yahoo? together with the rest of the OpenStack uh, projects. Um, did you all get the question? OK. Um, did you get to the first part? I, I, um, may, maybe the, the, the second part, with, with, together with OpenStack. Um, so we, we um, was in uh, discussions uh, with the Open Infra Foundation when we thought about, OK, will we build an own association or not? And um, at some point, this got stuck somewhere. I, I don't actually know what. I guess it's the, the focus is a bit different. Um, so, and, and we wanted to to have this project home some, somewhere. So, um, for now, it's that. But it's not um, now that it needs to be there. I guess this can uh, move later on if if it feels right for both sides. Um, mm. Um, regarding the first question, we of course had a look at other deployment tools like uh, OpenStack Helm or so on. But what we missed the most part was like the second, second day operations, like keeping uh, your cluster safe if you don't touch it. Like f for the most part, if you don't touch uh, deployment, it will break after some time. And also like this, what I showed you today with the live migration that you have this whole lifecycle management for a compute node. And so basically, don't have to do some things manually. We missed in other deployment tools we saw when we started Yaouk. So, so my, mostly this operator stuff with the control loop uh, is something at the point we started with this project, we didn't found somewhere else in, in a way that, that fits our needs. Um, and also, I, I had a look because at the same time, like we started, also other projects started and was also presented at the summit. but. Um, uh, I, I think at the most I didn't found this approach, which is totally fine. It's, it's the needs of other um, users, so um, then they build something else. But uh, like 
color ansible and so didn't give us this stuff. It's nice to deploy an OpenStack deployment. Maybe it's even easier than Yahoo if you only want an initial OpenStack deployment, but to change something, it's hard for all this stuff. How are you doing networking um, between Kubernetes and OpenStack? And are you doing networking between yes. Kubernetes and OpenStack? And can you, for example, schedule a normal pod on a hypervisor? Um, um, do, do you mean communication between VMs and workload on, uh, on the Kubernetes cluster? Yeah, below? so um, no. uh, pods talking to VMs. Um, no, that's currently out of scope um, because we would also say, okay, if a customer wants a Kubernetes cluster, which would be then an, uh, something they want, um, we would uh, run a Kubernetes cluster on top of OpenStack, for example, in the project of the customer, and then customer can put also a VM next to it, which make it more easy. So, so basically, the, the decision was, okay, we want to operate clouds with multi-tenants, and they are connect somehow the underlying Kubernetes to VMs uh, wouldn't be so nice. So that's what you can expect. Yeah. Whatever pop you also yeah. want to have on hypervisor, like you do monitoring stuff, exporters, we also run LLDP in the containers because we don't want to install it on the memory. You can run everything you want, but keep in mind, these resources are then subtracted from whatever you want to provide as a VM. So you need to keep resource schedule in mind, because the Kubernetes resource schedule does not consider what OpenStack wants to use. So either you do it hard by C groups or have a very good compute configuration. Okay. Further questions or questions regarding that? Um, you mentioned the very popular term sovereignty, especially in, in uh, Europe at uh, these days. Can you elaborate a little bit on how you address this term here with Yahook? Um, I think it's a bit hard to, to put it there. Um, it, I, I mentioned it more on, on the cloud and heat side, and uh, for, so I won't go into detail about this company right now, or, or my company right now. Um, Yahook is mostly focused on installing OpenStack, and how you then configure it or, or what you do with it, um, that's on the operator side. Um, I think our part for that with Yahook is that everyone can use Yahook to install their own OpenStack cluster. Um, the rest, from my understanding, but maybe we can discuss later about it, um, I would say uh, it's not really the focus, but of course we don't want to block it. So we, we don't want to, to block uh, Sovereignty uh, with our than but want to support it. Mm. But okay, good. I I don't see anything that we could do with Yahoo to make it much better. But maybe my understanding is different than yours. Oh, okay, I was just confused a little bit that uh, since you added it on your slides yeah. here. On your, uh, okay. It was only related to to the the company and not really to this tool maybe. Further questions? Uh, if not, um, also time is over. Uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. Um, if you have further questions, you can reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you.